Good evening and welcome to the Berkeley County Board, excuse me, Berkeley County Board of Education Tuesday, September 23rd meeting. I call the meeting to order. I declare that a quorum is present and that the media has been notified. A board and agenda item two, approval of agenda, we do need to amend tonight's agenda. I'll ask for a motion in a second. The amendment that we require tonight would be agenda item 12D entitled Expulsion Appeal. We just received the Expulsion Appeal this afternoon, therefore we'll be adding it tonight. So do I have a motion and a second to amend tonight's agenda to include item 12D, Expulsion Appeal? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we amend tonight's agenda on item uh, 12 and add item D, Expulsion Appeals. Second. Thank you. Mr. Cooper has made a motion to amend the agenda to include 12D, expulsion appeal. That uh, uh, amendment has been seconded by Mr. Obie. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries unanimously. The agenda has been amended for tonight's meeting as well. Well, now we need to call for the approval of the agenda. Right. So we just created a second step, but it's uh, important to get this child's appeal heard. With the amended agenda, to have a motion and a second for the approval of tonight's agenda. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Obie. All those in favor of approving tonight's <laughs> amended, amended agenda, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The amended agenda has been approved. We'll move to agenda item number three, the opening prayer and Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For now is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now moving on to agenda item number four. Tonight's <coughs> agenda item four is entitled Approval of the Minutes of the Regular Meeting of September 9th, 2014. Do I have a motion and a second for the approval of the September 9th minutes? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the minutes of the regular meeting September 9th, 2014. Second. Thank you. Dr. Etheridge has made a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of September 9th. 2014. His motion was seconded by Ms. Moore. All those in favor of approving the minutes of September 9th, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <clears throat> the minutes of the September 9th, 2014 regular meeting have been approved. Moving on to agenda item number five, entitled the approval of the August 2014 Head Start Budget Expenditures Report the August 2014 Head Start Credit Card Report, Prospective New Hires, Program Information Report, and Request for Additional Buses. Do I have a motion and a second regarding agenda item number five? Mr. Chair, I make the motion to approve the August 2014 Head Start information as presented on agenda item five. Thank you, Dr. Etheridge. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Ms. Lee. A motion has been made by Dr. Etheridge to approve the August 2014 Head Start information as presented in agenda item number five. That motion was seconded by Ms. Lee. Do we have any discussion regarding agenda item five? Hearing no discussion, we'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the motion to approve the August 2014 Head Start information as presented in agenda item five, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries unanimously. The August 2014 Head Start information has been approved. 
Now we'll move to agenda item number six, and that is entitled Special Recognition for the STEM Premier. Dr. O'Gorman. Thank you, Dr. Murray, members of the board, Dr. Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. Um, tonight it's my pleasure to um, recognize one of our academy partners, STEM Premier. Uh, in just a moment, I'll, I'll ask um, some individuals to come up. I've um, got a letter here from Goose Creek High School uh, outlining some of the highlights of the work that they've done with Goose Creek last year, and I'll talk about some of the work they're doing across the district um, this year. They had a lot to say. I'm, I'm going to hit the highlights. Uh, STEM pr Premier set the bar high and blazed the trail for future Academy partners this past school year. Their online platform is a central hub for connections to ma be made by students, post-secondary educational institutions, and industry. They have provided a solution to the problem by designing an online platform that allows for our STEM Academy students to brand themselves within the STEM college and career field. They took a hands-on approach with each student during the process. They've collaborated on a plan to place the entire Academy student population on their platform. This is alone a representation of their time and dedication to our students. They actively solicit other business and industry partners for Goose Creek STEM Academy. They also sit and participate with the Goose Creek High STEM Advisory Board. Their staff provides input for future growth of the Academy. They ask how they can help, have consistently made uh, time to serve as mentors to students. Uh, demonstrated genuine interest in their partnership with Goose, Goose Creek High by hosting debriefing sessions, how can we make this better, that included administration, teachers, and the guidance team members referencing uh, the needs that they, their, their needs. Uh, and this is from um, Mr. Herman, uh, the biggest and most important compliment I can give about STEM Premier and their staff would be that when they walk down the hallway or visit a STEM Academy classroom at Goose Creek High, our, stu our students know who they are and know they are here to make a difference. Quite an outstanding statement there. Now, in addition, this year, uh, they're partnering with the entire district in an effort to engage high school students in the process of building um, their individualized brand while receiving the following benefits. Personalized guidance services to help uh, guide students in their career path through skills and uh, interests. Uh, access to internships, scholarships, events, and industry-specific opportunities, recognition for achievements both academic and technical, networking capabilities with colleges, universities, and corporations, creation of a comprehensive profile that showcases skills and talents, including certification, awards, community service, and more in both digital and print format. Um, they have provided their product at no charge to all of our, our students at the high school level. Absolutely outstanding, and what they, uh, their product offers is um, essentially uh, a way for students to provide a profile of themselves so that they are attractive to uh, businesses, uh, colleges, and, and things of that nature as our, our students are looking to move out of high school and into the, uh, the next path of their life. So uh, Mr. Donald Talinsky is not able here to be here tonight, but uh, I'd like to call up Casey Welts and Jay Ty uh, to the podium at this time, if we could give them a big round of applause. Thompson and Dr. Murphy, y'all want to come down? Mr. Husky. Uh, first off, I'd just like to say, you know, this is, this is truly an honor. Um, we, we've come a long way, and it really started um, with uh, Goose Creek High School and the work that uh, Mr. Husky, Mr. Herman, um, Tana Lee, Patricia Wieg, 
um, all, all did to help make this instrumental in, in the success that we have. This is something that we started here in South Carolina. We built this company in South Carolina, and we're taking it national. And just to give an idea, from we started with Goose Creek in uh, last spring. It led to the opportunity to meet uh, Dr. O'Gorman and to do a uh, rollout with, with Berkeley County School District. It's led to other districts across the state and even um, across the country has been looking from the press that we have uh, has established at Goose Creek High School last spring. So it's really been an honor to work with all of you. I know Dr. Talinsky um, wishes he could be here today. You know, our goal is to continue to showcase the, the great work that all your students are doing, the hard work that the teachers are doing, and really help that, that no child goes unseen. And we can really connect them with the businesses and opportunities of the future. So we can't thank you enough for the time, the opportunity, bearing with us, and however we can be of assistance, um, we're happy to do that. So thank you very much, and uh, appreciate your time. Thank you very much for being with us this evening. STEM Premier, we're very fortunate to have partnered with you in this very, in, very important curriculum area for the uh, 21st century. Um, yes, if we have any guests at this time, the superintendent has reminded me that this is a good time for you to exit. We have a lengthy meeting, so if we have any guests that would like to leave at this time, you will not hurt our feelings. Take advantage of this opportunity. With that said, we'll move on to agenda item number seven, citizen comments. Up first this evening, and I'll read the citizen comment procedures, but we'll get, go ahead and get our first speaker to the microphone. First speaker is Mr. Bill Healy. As Mr. Healy approaches the microphone, we'll again recite the citizen comment procedures. In order to conduct the meeting in an orderly and efficient manner, we ask that you honor the following guidelines. Stakeholder comments are welcomed and encouraged. However, the board will not take immediate action on public comments at this meeting. Any person wishing to address the board must register prior to the meeting. Comments must be regarding programs, policies, or procedures. Comments regarding an employee or student other than the child of the speaker will not be heard in public session. Groups addressing the same topic should select one speaker. Comments will be limited to three minutes per speaker. And finally, the board chair reserves the right to allot additional time or halt public comments that do not adhere to the guidelines. Up first tonight is Mr. Bill Healy of Hanahan, South Carolina. Mr. Healy would like to discuss the new Hanahan Elementary School. Mr. Cooper, if you would serve as our timer. Mr. Healy, the microphone is yours, sir. <laughs> First, I want to thank you all to the board uh, for letting me speak tonight, but I want to thank you for living up to the commitment that you made to us, that meeting that we had, that you said that you would come to a meeting with the Hanahan City Council, and we would work together, and you did it. You lived up to it, and I want to personally thank you for that. Uh, one of the things that I, I just found out the other day when the RFPs were submitted was that an additional piece of property was going to be placed. And that is part of the old Navy base. And Hanahan City Council has gotten approval to have that property, which is approximately 45 acres. I know that the school board attempted to get it at the time, and it was unavailable to them. For some reason now, it became available. I'll tell you, it was God's intervention. It was divine intervention on that. But it's 45 acres. Some of the complaints from all the properties that we've had was wetlands, parking, size of space, amount of traffic. This one piece of property <coughs> covers everything. Because even though Hanahan has decided to take this 45 acres, they have offered 15 acres free of charge to the school district. That's no expense for this property. This property is shovel ready. This property faces North Rhett also, besides Williams Lane. A little roadway has to be put down on both sides, but now we have the traffic problem solved. They're putting 
where the Bowen School District, where Bowen is, where you were originally thinking, they're putting in another 973 units in that development. We can't get out of that development now. Think about it. When you put school buses or additional cars and everything else, this does it. Now, I've only said that you only get 15 acres, so what's going to happen with the remainder? It's going to become a recreational area. You did such a wonderful job with Goose Creek Primary with putting a school next to a rec recreational area that can be used. You'll have the same thing. Hanahan will make that a recreational area. Okay, one last thing. I made a commitment this week when I heard about it to one of the councilmen that I'm going to fight and make sure that we put a Field of Dreams over there also. A Field of Dreams is put there for any athlete that would have a handicap or disability. It's time we step up. There are none in Berkeley County that I know of. So I'd like to see that, and that will be one of the things. But I promised each one of you that we could change the legacy of what was happening with Hanahan. This is a gift. This will change the legacy of everything. I would ask you to really dig deep into this, to look very hard. I think this is the only solution. I think this will make everybody happy. And I think we can make the date without a problem also because it is shovel ready. The property should be available right after midterm elections. So we figure around November, end of November, beginning of December, it will be. And it's in the appropriations bill. Senator Tim Scott is already working on it. Thank you very much. Have a pleasant day. Thank you, Mr. Hewlett. We certainly appreciate your comments uh, regarding the new Hanahan Elementary School. And thank you for being with us this evening. Up next is Mr. Terry Hardesty. Mr. Hardesty would like to discuss attorney fees. The uh, next speaker will be Ms. Pat Patricia. Do you go by Pat? Uh, Pat, Miss Pat, because I know you as Pat. Just don't use Patty. No, no, never, <laughs> never. All right, Miss Pat Eckstein, you'll be next. Mr. Hardesty, Mr. Cooper, if you'll time, Mr. Hardesty. Good evening, uh, Dr. Murray, members of the board, Dr. Thompson. Uh, Dr. Thompson gave a presentation about attorney's fees and included $670,000 for bond counsel. Uh, I've, I've done some research. I've talked to the uh, North Carolina Local Government Commission. They suggest that uh, bond fees should be per bond issuance and not per dollar amount. And they, uh, they say that $50,000 for bond issuance is, is routine. And for refunding bonds, about half of that. Um, I also checked with several locations in North Carolina. I found one that issued $200 million in bonds. The fees were 100, the attorney fees were $180,000. Uh, I've talked to several attorneys across the state and they are telling me that bond fees for a, a, a bond issuance should range between eighty dollars and $140,000. Uh, so I think we're, we're, we're a little bit out of line. Uh, we've, we've spent additional money for, for attorneys, for people under investigation, and I would ask the board, which forgeries uh, do you think are okay? Would forging uh, a student's transcript be an okay thing for the board to, to, to think is all right, or would forging a teacher credential be okay? Because those forgeries are misdemeanors. The administrator has been charged with a felony forgery. And I submit that you have no business paying attorney's fees nor paying that employee. Thank you. All right, up next is Ms. Pat Eckstein. Ms. Eckstein would like to discuss next Tuesday's Tanner Foster Creek School Site Selection Meeting. Ms. Eckstein, thank you for being with us this evening. Hi, good evening, and thank you, Dr. Thompson, for sending the flyer today. We got it out on Facebook pages already to our mailing list, and we'll do everything we can to make sure there's a good turnout. The Citizens Committee really felt very enthusiastic after the meeting on August 21st with representatives of the school board in the city and the Citizens Committee, and we've been uh, waiting with bated breath, with uh, enthusiastic anxiety for last Thursday to come and for the submissions to be made of the RFPs, and uh, we're really looking forward to next, next Tuesday's meeting. I just wanted to ask to, to make sure where you say discussing the proposals that you're going to take citizen input, because that was something you told the Citizens Committee, Dr. Thompson and Dr. Murray, that you would be seeking input from the Citizens Committee. And the, the folks who, who will be coming to next week's meeting are, are, are all the same citizens. So we're hoping that you were going to take input. And um, 
wondered if you were going to tape it because we know not everybody can attend the meeting and you do post them on your, your website and you did tape all the meetings of the Daniel Island, Kane Hoy and Clements Ferry Committee. So, and I understand your, your son's in a big football game next Tuesday so you can't, oh, you I'm can't gonna, make it. <laughs> well, I'll stop by to say hello before Family I go, comes go first. on to cheer on number 99. All yes. right, there you go. We will do that. Um, so just wondered if you would do that, that would be very advantageous because when all of you vote, if you can see what the citizens say back, you can't always make all the meetings as uh, with my aunt at family events, we had different interpretations of what we saw and what we heard. It was our own history, you know. So if you can see it and come to your, to your own uh, conclusions from that, um, if members can't make it, but I would urge all the board members, if you can, please come and listen to the citizens' comments and the exchanges. And we're very anxious to hear what the different uh, proposals are as they're presented by the school district and those who submitted them. So thank you very much. See you next Tuesday. Thank you, Ms. Eckstein. We appreciate you being here this evening. All right, that concludes tonight's citizens' comments. So now we'll move to agenda item number eight, uh, entitled Deputy Superintendent. We have an item for action tonight from Mr. Frangini. That item for action is entitled Proficiency-Based Application. Mr. Frangini, we are all yours, sir. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Thompson, members of the board. I'd like to ask Dr. O'Gorman to come up and present the item for action, Proficiency-Based Application, followed by an item of information and update on our professional learning communities in the school district. Dr. Gorman. Thank you, sir. Good evening again. Uh, you have in your packets a copy of the completed application for our proficiency-based uh, system. Uh, the State Department of Education requires that we submit this to you annually. Uh, I would not have brought it to you if I had the choice because we have made no changes. Uh, the only change that we have made is that um, was to our virtual learning policy, which you all have already approved. Um, so uh, the process of, of putting this before you is to check off the assurances that we have brought this before you. Um, I, I will point out on page, I think it's page nine, uh, we've got an outside evaluator who is currently looking at our results from last year. As soon as I have those results, I'll, I'll get them to you. They're still digging through the data to determine how many students signed up to recover credit, to get initial credit, and things of that nature, which we'll bring back to you at a later date. Do we have an item for action tonight? We'll go ahead and accept a motion in a second, and then we'll entertain any questions or discussion that may uh, come as a part of that motion. Do I have a motion in a second regarding agenda item number eight, entitled Proficiency-Based Application? You do, Mr. Chair. I move that we approve the Proficiency-Based Application as submitted by the administration in agenda item 8A. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. A motion has been made by Ms. Schwalbe. That motion has been seconded by Ms. Lee. I will repeat that motion for the record. A motion has been made to approve the proficiency-based application as submitted by the administration in agenda item 8A. Do we have any questions or discussion regarding this motion? Seeing no hands, we'll go ahead and call the question. All those in favor of approving the proficiency-based application as submitted by the administration in agenda item 8A, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries unanimously. Dr. O'Gorman, the proficiency-based application has been approved. Now for item for information, professional learning communities. Hopefully this will be a little bit more interesting <laughs> to you. It is to me. I um, want to provide you a, an update on where we are in terms of our district priority goal of implementing professional learning communities um, across the district. I can <coughs> fast forward for you. I want to give you a quick overview of our timeline of implement, implementing PLCs, uh, as we affectionately call them, professional learning communities. You'll hear me say PLCs a lot. That's what I'm saying. Um, in April, we had an uh, in-house team that was trained by our outside consultants who I will introduce in a few moments from the American Alliance for Innovative Schools, AAIS. Um, so they were trained on going out into our, our school district and getting a snapshot of where we were in terms of um, implementing PLCs at that time. 
Uh, we took that information uh, and we pr produced a training session during our summer leadership in July for all principals, assistant principals for instruction, uh, and of course our instructional coaches were trained uh, in the PLC foundational practices. You know, what do you have to have in a professional learning community in order for it to be effective? Um, for the remainder of the year, we will target our professional development based on observational data. We've got um, our principals will be out observing PLCs, looking for those foundational practices. The results of that information will be used to drive uh, early release uh, days along with other professional development opportunities to target uh, specific school needs because obviously they'll vary from school to school. Um, and of course our instructional coaches will work with targeted teams as, as needed. Um, just some of the changes that we've made to our, our overall system specific to the implementation of PLCs. Um, you know, principals are required to do, you know, a certain number of classroom observations. We have, um, you know, allowed them to or have provided for them to observe professional learning communities in conjunction with classroom observations. Um, uh, again, the PLC observations drive our professional development during early release. Uh, there's that school level training and we've asked uh, schools to provide half the time for training for professional learning communities and half a time for teachers to actually go and work and implement um, what they have learned during that time. So it's not all just, um, you know, training for that early release, giving teachers time to work and practice what they have learned during that, that training. Um, some of the, the things that I have observed since the training in July, and it seems like that was just such a short time ago, it's been exciting to see um, evidence of that training happening out in the schools. Um, this is uh, from a, one of our schools that did a self-assessment. They asked teachers to go do and uh, do a self-assessment on the professional learning community strategy. So those are just some of the directions that were handed out. If you go ahead and click, um, and so these are just some of the results. And so what the principal did is she took this uh, information. Uh, she worked with AAIS and said, "Okay, so when you come into our school, here's our needs assessment, and and you know help." ask uh, Ms. Schrode to, to cater the professional development that day specific to their needs. The next is, um, these are actual pictures. Um, this is from College Park Elementary. Um, the, the principal took the training that she got this summer, she uh, implemented it at her school, and she has teachers working in these PLCs, um, going through the process of unwrapping standards, developing strategies to address those specifically unwrapped standards, um, setting timelines for uh, formative assessments and, and summative assessments. And here's a, a, just a snapshot of, of what those teachers were working on. And you see they've got a timeline for um, when that uh, standard will be implemented, the skills and supporting standards that go along with it, the common assessment they were going to create, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and so you see, see this evidence um, throughout the school. It was, it was pretty neat to see. So at this time, I'm going to uh, see them nodding their heads over there. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, Robin Schrode and, and David Holden to come up. Uh, they, are, they are the uh, American Alliance for Innovative Schools. Um, and I'll let them uh, introduce themselves and their backgrounds and that kind of thing. Uh, they've been with, have y'all been here a year now? A year and? Yeah. 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 Seems, seems like forever, but in a good way. Yeah, in a good yeah. way. Um, so I'll get out of the way and let these two um, talk about themselves. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Chair Board, thank you very much for this invitation to come and speak. We just happened to be in town, so worked out uh, well. My name is Robin Schrode. I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, I'm a former classroom teacher, counselor, dean of instruction. Um, became the uh, director of secondary redesign um, in the mid-90s and eventually became executive director of professional development in the Irving School District in Irving, Texas. And then I met this gentleman uh, at different places around the country and figured out he had the other half of my brain that I wanted. And we formed American Alliance for Innovative Schools, which is a really big name I know for two people. Um, and <laughs> Uh, members of the board, uh, Dr. Thompson, uh, good evening. My name is David Holden. I am the other half of her brain. And, uh, you know, that slide can, you can only fit so many words on a slide. And then you all know that 
uh, as, as educators, we wear a million different hats. Um, but some of the hats that I wore was uh, not only a classroom teacher, K-12, my first job was kindergarten, and I ended my classroom career uh, at, as a high school English teacher, uh, instructional coach, as well as the uh, program director for our English learners. I'm from San Diego, California and uh, one mile north of the, of the border, and we had lots of students who were learning English for the, uh, for the first time in the classroom uh, and in, in the schools, and so I oversaw programs uh, to support them. Robin and I both come from uh, uh, career academy systems where teachers were working together, having collegial conversations that were truly transformative in nature. Um, uh, student learning uh, increased as a result of the nature of the collaboration uh, in our schools, and we are very proud to be a part of Berkeley County School District's journey towards uh, that, that same type of collaboration. So, um, I'll just take a second just to tell you a little bit. Um, at currently at the secondary level, the work that Robin and I are are doing um, is training, like uh, Dr. Gorman mentioned, uh, principals, um, instructional coaches, uh, instructional leaders within the building, on how to harness the power of of collaboration so that it truly makes a difference in student learning. Um, to move from, from congenial conversations where, where we just enjoy being with each other to collegial conversations where we're talking, having deep conversations about teaching and learning um, and, 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 and growing and learning together. So um, we're working with content teams, so teams of teachers who teach the same subject, as well as interdisciplinary teams uh, where um, we're helping people have conversations that wouldn't normally know how to talk with each other because they teach different subjects, but now we, they're finding common concepts and skills um, and, and working together to ensure consistent learning experiences as children go from one room to another room to another room. They see those deliberate intentional connections. So um, we're, not only are we proud to be here, but we are thrilled with the work that the teachers are doing and I mean, just like those pictures that you saw earlier, Robin and I have hundreds of just pictures of uh, and, exp and, and, and artifacts that show that Berkeley County teachers are working hard and are amazing at what they do. And it's just a pleasure to be here every single chance we get. Um, what you see here is a representation of um, our approach to working with professional learning communities. As Dave said, um, this is what harnesses the best thinking of the group, um, that we go in and we actually went and used business practices of how you meet to have very focused, very product-driven, very uh, decision-oriented driven types of meetings. Uh, we as educators have never been trained in that arena and so we went to corporate America, took what, how they uh, for meetings and then put ed edu speak to it as you will. Um, so this is our approach in that we looked at the most current research um, really over the last 20 years uh, about what um, it, it is saying about what teachers need to think about when planning instruction and making the most um, <coughs> appropriate instructional decisions. So this cycle uh, we we won't go through the whole cycle, but we'd be glad to share the information with you. Uh, represents that research where you start. You start with the standards. You, you start with what the teacher and the student um, is held accountable for teaching and learning through step seven, which is the continuous improvement model of always looking at your data, reflecting back, and as teachers, did we design instruction such that it meets the needs of all students? Did we make the most appropriate instructional decisions based on the data that we had um, and it's a cyclical cycle. We took the uh, principals through the training. Um, it was so exciting to see that picture of those <coughs> teachers uh, that the principal actually went through and took their staff through the same training and they were producing some of the work um, that is reflected here. Um, so this is just a, represent, a visual representation of the research. What actually came from medical research, Alzheimer's research, brain injury, uh, we've learned so much over the last 20 years about how the human brain processes information that we haven't known up to that point that has huge implications for us as educators and what do we need to think about now that we have that information and take a more scientific approach so it's the art and the science of teaching and how it meshes together. Uh, I'd just like to take a quick moment just to mention that 
your, your, your school leaders, um, Robin and I work across the country in a variety of districts, and Berkeley County is the only place where we've seen so many school level leaders. We see principals, assistant principals, instructional coaches, we see district staff engage during the training, and um, it's just thrilling to watch because um, I, we, don't always see. we don't always see that. So I just want to give a oh, shout out to, to, to your, your staff um, and, and just how they dig in and learn side by side with everyone, um, all the teachers too. So it's, it's fantastic to watch. Thank you. Thank you. On, on behalf of my colleagues, we appreciate yeah. that. It's great to hear mm -hmm. uh, some positive comments about our folks in instruction. Thank you so much. Thank Do we you. have any questions or comments for Dr. O'Gorman or our visitors this evening regarding the information in the presentation? Working Good. hard. Yeah, thank you. You are working hard. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Thank you. All right. We'll now move to Thank agenda you. item number nine, entitled Financial Services Tonight. Mr. Thomas has an item for information. That item for information is entitled Fiscal Responsibility, Area of Focus Update on Fund Balance Policy and Procedures. Mr. Thomas, the microphone is yours, sir. Mr. Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Thompson, um, when I was asked to talk about this, tonight, I was like wondering really what I was going to talk about because it's just kind of something I do every day. But so when I put it down on paper, I said it really is a lot going on. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, related to this this topic. Next slide, please. Um, back. <laughs> there you go. Um, just want to draw your attention to what we're talking about. That third bullet, um, as far as the topic for tonight. Next slide. Um, the fund balance policies and procedures. Um, been to several seminars and discussions about many habits of. Uh, finance folks, but this one is typically the number one highly effective habit of school business and governmental entities is watching the fund balance on a, on, on a daily basis. So that's typically the number one habit that uh, is discussed in our group. Next slide. Um, this is just a slide from our uh, most recent audit, and you can see what we've done, you know, in 2013, and we, you know, basically try to, you know, as the as the general fund bills, you're going to have to try to add fund balance to that fund because it's that, that percentage is growing because you're adding um, uh, expenditures to it. So we, we've done a good job of that over the last few years. Um, so I want to um, comment on that. Next slide. Again, this is the overall fund balance. Um, you can see uh, where we're at uh, general fund wise. Um, another fund that we I didn't include in here is the school <coughs> nutrition fund. We, we watched that because that's a uh, somewhat similar to the general fund and that we uh, get local sales and you know federal reimbursements and it's another fund that's kind of supposed to be self-supporting uh, but we're doing a good job with that as well um, and talking to some of my other school districts they they are in worse shape but there are some that are smaller districts than us that have fund balances that are just phenomenal like 80 million dollars worth and I, I won't tell you who they are but so I wish I had that <laughs> but yeah. um, Anyway, but we're in a good place. Next slide. Uh, I'm not going to read through all these, but you can. Um, these are some of the significant reasons to maintain an adequate fund balance. Cash flow is one of them, um, and Act 388 is another one. Uh, with the uh, discussion of, of not getting owner-occupied taxes and uh, in, in the state not being able to fund that on a, on an annual basis. Um, I'm not sure what the last negative amount was, but it was you know. A couple years ago, about $125 million short statewide. Uh, so that money is coming from somewhere else to, to fund. Um, and again, uh, un uh, uncertain economic times, which we had two or three years ago, and, and still trying to, to move up to get to where we're supposed to be. And then um, being on the coast. Um, knock on wood. I won't say anything mess that. <laughs> so next slide. Um, just in summary, the, the financial audit uh, revealed those two uh, summary comments and um, we are working on the 2014 audit and uh, we'll have a delivery of, uh, in December for y'all on that. Next slide. Um, these are just a couple of policy references that we uh, went through a couple of years ago in updating all the finance policies uh, and not only in finance but in other areas but these are some of the three that um, kind of took to mind that, that kind of address the fund balance. Uh, I'll draw your attention to the comment, the last two comments. If you remember in 2012, we used, um, we planned to use uh, about $6 billion of uh, reserve 
to balance the budget so we wouldn't have to impact classrooms. But due to some of the policies and procedures that we have in place and the watchful eye that we have district-wide, um, we were able to add $1.3 million to that. So I, I feel that was a victory for that year. If you remember 13-14, we planned to use 2.1, and the books are still being reconciled and closed, and I won't, I, I know what it is, but I'm not going to tell you what it is at this point in time, because I don't want to be stuck to a number. So anyway, um, I wanted to refer to that policy. Next policy. Um, annual operating budget goals and objectives is just a, a, a plan to kind of have a formalized uh, policy in place to, to deal with budgets and goals that would um, impact positively the fund balance. Next slide. And then overall fiscal management goals and objectives. Um, uh, we always talk about long-term budget planning that sometimes with the state of South Carolina, it's really hard to do because it's just so different every single year that you know it's, you can plan it, but it's never really kind of comes to fruition. So, um, but this is another uh, policy that uh, helps this process. Next slide. Uh, these are some of the procedures and strategies that we actually have in place. Um, I'm going to, uh, we'll go to a link on our intranet to show you where our financial procedures are. Those are um, constantly being updated, constantly being reviewed by our staff and, and, and the users of those. So we take suggestions from our uh, schools and departments to update that. Uh, personal action forms is a electronic place uh, process that we have in place to actually track people um, from a uh, budget to an account to department to fund and all that sort of thing. Um, also in our budget prep system, we have an integrated, it's integrated accounting and payroll and employee profiles that are actually tied to a, a person. And so if that person leaves and they don't free that branch, whatever you want to call it, they can't hire somebody into that position. So we're tightly managing people and the salary part of the budget, since you know that's over 86% of our overall budget on all funds. Um, collaborate with external officers and peers on best practices. Uh, we do in-service training. Um, we're looking for ways to build efficiencies, but also increase revenues through um, e-payables, through our uh, uh, PCAR program. And, um, So those are just a uh, some of the list of things that I thought about. Next slide. Um, try to go to that link. And I might have to sign in. Yeah. I gave you my password. I have to change it. <laughs> Don't do that. Then you won't know if you're making it. Well, I've had it for a long time. Don't tell Diane that. This is our, I'm not going to go through each one of them, it's just, it's just a, on our intranet, and these are pros, uh, financial policies and procedures that we have that actually a lot of school districts have actually used and copied and uh, put in, in place in their school districts. We're proud of this. We were, I think, one of the first school districts in 2007 or 8 to really kind of get this formalized, so we're really proud of that. Um, we can exit This is just a picture of the PAF. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, we've had a lot of training uh, with the schools and departments on this, so I just wanted to show you what it really looks like. And it's all electronic and, and builds into the system, so there's a lot less errors and key in and that sort of thing. So next slide. Questions? All right. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Well, do, do we have, have any questions? Yeah, I do one more comment. Yes, also, sir. Also, part, uh, part of the, of the uh, policy is to also build like a per pupil spending so we're, we're building a spreadsheet that's a multi-year spreadsheet and we're actually reviewing it uh, to make sure the numbers from all years are correct because we might have done them at different times uh, you know making sure that the numbers are correct as far as audited numbers but we're going to build this long-term per pupil cost by school um, through current so we'll have that kind of uh, that's that's part of the process to kind of watch where we're doing um, in that so just wanted to show you a quick picture of it all right before i ask for questions and comments i believe dr thompson had some yep. comments we'll let you start yep. could you go back to the first slide for us please sure. just 
Next, Next one. Second. Just want to remind the board when when we created, or you guys approved the goals and area of, of focus under finance, we added that third bullet in regards to the fund balance policy. Mm -hmm. So it over, I believe earlier in the summer, we approved the fund balance policy to keep it at a minimum of 15% Correct. of our general operating fund. Correct. So we really couldn't have that goal since it already, the policy had already been approved. So what you had recommended that we have put procedures in place to make sure that we can maintain or adhere to that policy mm -hmm. that you created. So um, this is an update of, on our, our quarterly update on our goals and areas of focus for finance. But just remember that third bullet is new to your goals and areas of focus compared right. to previous years. Right. Good point. All right. Thank you, Dr. Thompson. Do we have any questions or comments for Mr. Thomas regarding his presentation? Mr. Cooper, we'll let you start first. Um, no, I just want to, um, regardless of what other people might want to say about your and your department's capabilities or what they do in other states, I know that you and your team are the envy of the southeast, not just the school districts in South Carolina because of what you've been able to do and literally saving taxpayers tens of millions of dollars um, and being able to keep us profitable or put, keeping a good fund balance through all the hard times that we have done and I much appreciate oh, thank you. what you do and take offense to people that think uh, or would say otherwise. Thank you. All right, any other questions or comments? Ms. Walby? I, I just would add to Mr. Cooper's comments, um, having been an employee for Berkeley County formally and watching Brantley over many years, um, I, I can't say enough about I've you. I've gotten Andrew bigger and grayer, stuff. right? Well, <laughs> I've forgiven you for something. Okay. Um, I, I think the other import, important part about this is while all of us could look at all of this is the number, you know, the number um, crunching and all of these things that, that you have to think about with I, everyone's wishes. Um, I, I know that what comes through for me as a board member is that you're also focused on children. And of course, I can say that about everybody um, throughout the district. But I think it's especially important um, for you because um, the information you give us as board members, um, I can't imagine how we would sort through it all without your expertise. I had a hard, hard enough time by myself. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and I do have a ninth grader at Hanahan High, so, you know. That's right. She can help you with the math. She can, well, <laughs> she can help me with my computer. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Just a quick comment, and I believe Dr. Ethel, okay. some, some, maybe some more comments as well. But Mr. Thomas, uh, w this is such a wonderful thing we have with transparency. Mm -hmm. um, I may be wrong, correct me if I am, but I believe that we literally have all of our transactions online we do. that can be looked at by any member of the public at any time. Correct. What law was put in place to have school districts do that? And uh, does it also include city and council governments? I believe it does, okay. city and council, but I'm not for sure. Um, but the law was implemented, I want to say, in 07 or 08, around that period of time. Right. And we were one, we were the first school district to have I it online. Right. So. right. I just think it's a wonderful thing every governmental entity should be doing it. Transparency, I, I think, is great for the taxpayer. Any questions or comments from any other members of the board? Everybody? I, too, am a big fan. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thank All right. You, Moving on to agenda item number 10. That is entitled Administration and Facilities. Mr. Jackson, you're up. Mr. Jackson has two items for action this evening. The first one is agenda item 10A, entitled Cross High School Renovation Phase 2, Guaranteed Maximum Price. Action item 10B is entitled Request for Proposal 427 for the 2014-2015 year, Whitesville Elementary School Selective Roof Replacement. Mr. Jackson. Good evening, Chairman Murray, Dr. Thompson, members of the board. At this time, I'd actually like to invite Connie Myers and Crystal Queen to come forward to present phase two of the Cross High School Renovation product, uh, Project and GMP to be followed by item 10B RFP 427, uh, Whitesville Elementary School Selective Roof Replacement. All right, thank you, Mr. Jackson. Ms. Myers, the microphone is yours. 
Thank you, and good evening again, Mr. Dr. Murray and Dr. Thompson and members of the board. Day, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tonight, we would like to talk to you about the renovation project at Cross High School, Phase 2. The project has bid and is now ready to start construction once we receive your approval. Recently, there's been a lot of publicity about the rising cost of construction, and for this project, we are very pleasantly surprised that the bids came within the budget and we did not have to cut any items. The design construction team has prepared all the details of the project and the bids, and we're presenting that information to you tonight. So to get started, I'm gonna introduce Crystal and her team. Good evening, Chairman Murray, Dr. Thompson, and members of the board. Um, I'm very excited about our presentation tonight and our team's opportunity to deliver another quality project to Cross High School. Um, currently, the contractor is completing the punch list for the phase one of the locker room renovation, and the students and staff are very excited about their new space. So tonight, we are here again to um, present phase two of the project, and I'd like to introduce the um, team that we have, um, Sam Heron. He is with Stubbs Muldrow. Um, he's the principal in charge, so I'd like to um, recognize him. Miss Margie Longshore, our project architect, and she's going to give you a presentation. And then also I'd like to recognize Chris Poe with Thompson Turner Construction, and he's our operations manager. So I'm going to turn it over to Margie. Hi, good evening. Um, it's great to see you all again. We were here in May to discuss phase one with you, and now we'll give you an update on phase two. Um, the image that's on the screen right now is the only new construction piece of the project. The remainder of the project is all renovation of spaces that are already existing at the school. We will be adding a new entry, exterior entry, outside of the media center that will be um, available for public entry, um, possibly after hours if the media center is open to, um, to the greater cross community. It also gives us a place for the bookmobile to park. Um, there has been some coordination with the Berkeley County Library System and there are arrangements in place for the bookmobile to visit the school um, once a week, I believe, at this point. Um, to introduce the team, we have the same team on this portion of the project that we had on phase one. Um, Thompson Turner, as Crystal mentioned, is our contractor. They are um, wrapping up the last finishing touches on the phase one project and we're ready to start on phase two. Um, our um, firm, Stubbs Muldrow Heron Architects, is based in Mount Pleasant. Craig Golden Davis out of Greenville is the consulting architect and the educational planner that is working with us on the project. They're also um, responsible for the interior design and finish selections. RMF Engineering is um, mechanical, plumbing, and electrical. Seaman White's side is handling landscape and civil engineering. BRC Acoustics and Audiovisual Design is our acoustical consultant on the project, and ADC Engineering is our structural engineer. Within the scope of the Phase two work, um, we are renovating existing spaces to become the new media center. We'll have the reading room, office and workroom spaces, um, small conference rooms, offices, a storage room, and then two public toilets so that the space will be self-sufficient um, and can be closed off from the remainder of the school. Um, the other renovated area will be the auditorium. We are combining what is currently the auditorium and the media center into a larger auditorium space. Um, we'll have seating. The, we do have retractable seating that will stay in place, be able to be pushed up against the wall. And that will seat about 325 um, people, which w should cover the the school population, then there's extra um, floor space to bring in movable chairs, so the total capacity is a little bit over 500 people in the room. Um, we've got a stage area, media production and a green room, dressing rooms, prop construction and storage rooms in, within that space. Um, one thing that has stood out to us through this whole process is the pride that Cross High School has in their school. Um, everything is very well maintained and the steering committee has provided us very valuable insight into how they, how they um, use the spaces and what their needs really are. Um, the renovated media center will provide a, a welcome center for the community and then an updated um, and technology, just current technology for all of the students as well. 
the expanded auditorium will, um, as I mentioned, allow space for the entire student population to gather together and then also be available possibly for community gatherings. Um, the diagram shows the overall plan of the um, school, and I'm, I'm sorry for auditorium <laughs> losing its M on the second line. Um, the blue area is, um, shows the locker rooms, which are completed as part of phase one. The middle yellow section is the auditorium. That, that is the area that is currently the media center and auditorium and will become um, all one space. Then the media center is on the top um, right hand corner. The gym is also shown. Um, during phase one, we had originally designed some just aesthetic upgrades to the gym. We held that out of phase one just to make sure that the budget numbers were okay. Since they are, it looks like we're gonna be able to do that work in phase two as well. Um, on the screen, we have the demolition plans. On the left is the auditorium, what will be the future auditorium. Um, the area to the top of the plan is currently the media center. The area um, to the bottom of the plan is currently the auditorium. Everything that's grayed out is out of our scope of the project. On the right-hand side, um, we have the what will be the future media center. It previously was um, serving as two science classrooms. Some of the demolition work for this area was done during phase one. Um, so this area will be the, the starting point for phase two. We have the new floor plans shown ahead of you. Um, on the left is the, the new plan for the auditorium. The stage is toward the top of the page with the um, associated dressing rooms, prop construction and storage rooms to the top of the page. What the area that was um, previously the stage will be converted into just another classroom for the school. Then on the right-hand side of the page, um, you can see the new media center. We're taking what were the two science classrooms, combining it into a larger room. And then on the very right-hand side of that um, plan is the new entry element that you saw in the very first slide. These photos show the current state of the um, of what will be the future media center. As I mentioned, some of this demolition work was started in phase one. So they've kind of got almost a blank slate ready to go in and keep going. This is the existing media center, just to give you an idea of what they have. Um, the picture's a little blurry, but our intent with the new work is to freshen it up, brighten it up, and, um, and give the media center a a dedicated space that will be welcoming to the public as well. And this is the 3D image of the, of the proposed new media center. Um, we've incorporated a palette of a lot of blue colors, that's crosses um, school colors with pops of yellow just to bring some life and vibrancy into the space. We have um, on the right hand side a kind of a feature wall where we're planning on um, working with the media center specialist to, to determine some phrases or words or you know, um, inspiring quotes from writers um, possibly to, to inspire the students and then that, that will happen on the ceiling planes as well. And this is the existing auditorium. Um, you know, really it's in good shape but um, since we have the opportunity to open up this space and what is the existing media center, we can enlarge the size and make it a more multi-purpose space as well. And this is the proposed um, 3D view of the new auditorium looking toward the stage. You can see what will be the retractable seating on the right and then we'll have open floor space that um, can be used for wrestling practice or community meetings. Um, it's very flexible, very open. And then this is the proposed um, uh, renovation to the gym. The paint on the wall will be new. Um, we've talked with the steering committee about doing a wall graphic just to brighten up the space and um, give the gym some identity. And then we'll be replacing some um, acoustical wall panels to help with sound in the room. And there are a couple of exterior sets of doors that are not in good shape and so we have the opportunity to 
to fix that and um, address some some issues with those. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Uh, the, the one thing our, our primary concern in this, this phase of the project is, is safety. Uh, as you can see, we're going to be right in the middle of the school, even though we can access pretty much everything from the back of the school, uh, it will be a, a busy area uh, with students, students around. Uh, and again, our number one concern is, is student safety. Uh, we'll work with Mr. Bush on egress uh, we, to, make, to make sure he's got proper egress, very similar to what we've done with Mr. Husky at, at uh, Goose Creek. Uh, we are right there with the students. We've got to make sure they've got a primary path and a secondary path to get out that's safe and, and keeps us separate from them. Uh, we're going to have some additional staffing uh, in this phase. Uh, during the summer, we didn't have, we had a few students, but not very many around. Uh, so we'll have some additional staffing on site during this phase. Uh, one thing we've done at Goose Creek is, is our superintendent has a radio, same channel as the, as the school staff, uh, which I think works, works really well if they need us or we need them. And that's something we'd like to talk to Mr. Bush about doing here uh, as well. Uh, we'd like to have the, the staff participate in the meetings. Uh, again, they don't have to sit through the entire meeting, but it, it's helpful to have them at the beginning or the end of the meeting so that they know, all right, here's what we're doing today, here's what we're doing next week, and at the same time, we know what they're doing. So if they've got a special event after school or they're doing testing or, or what have you, we, we want to know that too because, again, we're, we're living in their house and, and we've got to be cognizant of that. Uh, badging, uh, everybody that works on the site, all the subcontractors will go through an orientation and it's, it's mostly a safety orientation, but it's, it's very geared towards that specific site, uh, very geared towards student safety, staying away from students, uh, just, the, just the way they need to behave on, on the site. Everybody will be badged, uh, everybody will get a sticker on their helmet, so uh, if Mr. Bush sees somebody walking down the hall and they don't have a hard hat, they don't have a sticker on their hard hat, he knows. They haven't been through orientation, so he knew he gets a flag. And again, those stickers will be numbered, so if he sees somebody that, that may be somewhere they shouldn't be and it's sticker 321, we immediately can go see who that, who that person is. As far as solicitation goes, uh, very similar to what we did in phase one, advertise on local, um, local and, and across the state uh, periodicals and newspapers. Uh, we use Skibo. Uh, which is where all public projects are posted, uh, AGC. Uh, we went to our database, also went to Construction Dynamics database, so reached, reached out to a lot of people, but very focused on the, the Tri-County market. Uh, you can see here, this was the ad we had in the papers and that we, a flyer we also sent out to, to all of our, uh, all those folks in the database that I mentioned. Uh, we've got about 25% local and minority uh, subcontractors on this, which, again, it, this is a very remote school. Um, so it, I think that's very positive to get that, that amount of uh, participation. We've got several big trades, uh, HVAC and electrical, but then we've got some smaller trades as well. And some of these folks work on phase one, uh, so we're, we're happy to get them back on phase two also. Just a snapshot of the schedule uh, of where we've been. We'll, we'll start work sometime the, the first week or two of October. Uh, so right now we are working with subs. Um, finalizing pricing and contracts with our subcontractors. Uh, it's going to be done in phases just because of the way the, the areas are now. We will start in the new media center and we'll work in that area until about February and finish that. Then the media center can move uh, from their existing space into their new space and then we'll move into the uh, what is now the media center and the auditorium and start that phase of the project. So this second phase is actually going to be done in two phases as well. Uh, next summer, we'll have to go into some of the hallways uh, and do some of the fire protection and sprinkler work, and more than likely we won't be able to do that until summertime. But uh, that's work that can be done at, at the end of the project, so it, it should work well. So thank you. Um, with all that said, um, I would just like to thank you all for letting us be here tonight and to present. Um, the administration does recommend that we approve Thompson Turner's construction guaranteed maximum price of $3,027,370 for phase two of Cross High School renovation and the overall project cost of $3,852,195.
Thank you, uh, Ms. Queen. Uh, do I have a motion uh, and a second regarding agenda item 10A? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve Thompson Turner's guaranteed maximum price of $3,027,370 for the cross phase two renovation and an overall project cost of $3,852,195. Do I have a second? Second. Dr. Etheridge, thank you. Mr. Hayes has made a motion. I will repeat that motion for the record shortly. That motion has been seconded by Dr. Etheridge. The motion reads as follows. To approve Thompson Turner's guaranteed maximum price of $3,027,370 for Cross High School Phase II renovation and the overall project cost of $3,852,195. Do we have any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing Dr. Etheridge? I think I missed something on the slide where you have the square footage that was not going to change. Would you go back to that? One more. Just a That's correct. A curiosity question. You've got two public toilets with 40 square feet. That's 20 square feet a piece. That's a little bit more than four foot by four foot. Is that, is that an error? It sounds like it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> with the, the public toilets are probably Five. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yep. at least, so seven by five, but at okay. least, so it's probably 40 each, and so the total should be 80. Okay. So. Right, and just to clarify, there are other toilets in the hallway near the media center. These are just in the section of the media center, so we can close that part of the building off if we wanted to operate this building over the weekend or after hours they could be self-sufficient without having access to the rest of the building. Any other questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I will go ahead and call the question. A motion was made by Mr. Hayes. That motion was seconded by Dr. Etheridge to approve Thompson Turner's GMP guaranteed maximum price of $3,027,370 for Cross High School Phase II renovation and the overall project cost of $3,852,195. All of those in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much, Ms. Green. Dr. If, Thompson. If I may, um, we Queen. have Donna Osborne. Please help me with your... Donna Osborne Warden. Um, she's with the Berkeley County Library System, and sh we're grateful to be partners with you guys. And uh, I know in the plans we have a place to park the bookmobile, um, but we do have a facility that we would enjoy working with the county because I know we have a desire t for a public library in the cross area. And I, I hope that the residents or the taxpayers are pleased that we've got a joint, the potential of a joint use facility, and look forward to working with you. Um, to serve our children in the summer months as well with the public library. Yes, um, Susan Johnson, the Media Center coordinator there, and I have been working out a plan to have a library in the community. Thank you. Excellent. All right, Ms. Myers, moving on to agenda item 10B. Yes, sir. Um, we would also ask for approval for solicitation 427 for the school year 2014-15. Um, this is a project for Whitesville Elementary School selective roof replacement. The low bidder was Keating Roofing and Sheet Metal, and the amount was $134,690. Thank you, Ms. Myers. Do I have a motion and a second for agenda item 10B? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve RFP 427-1415 for the Whitesville Elementary School Selective Roof Replacement to Keating Roof 
roofing and sheet metal for a cost of $134,690. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Etheridge. A motion has been made by Ms. Lee. That motion was seconded by Dr. Etheridge to approve RFP 427 2014 2015 for Whitesville Elementary School selective roof replacement to Keating Roofing and Sheet Metal for a cost of $134,690. Do we have any questions or comments regarding the motion for agenda item 10B? Mr. Obey. Is this a regular capital improvement project or is this part of the bond referendum project? This is a bond referendum project, one of the minor renovations. All right, Mr. Obey, does that conclude your comments? Any other questions or comments for Ms. Myers regarding agenda item 10B? Hearing no further discussion, we'll call the question. The motion has been made to approve RFP 427 for Whitesville Elementary School selective roof replacement to Keating Roofing and Sheet Metal for a cost of $134,690. All of those in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries unanimously. Ms. Myers, agenda item 10B has been approved. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. And to all of our visitors tonight, I, I don't know if I have them all, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, Mr. Heron, Ms. Longshore, Mr. Poe, and Ms. Worden from the library. Thank you all for being with us as well. Thank you. All right, moving on to agenda item number 11, superintendent's report. Dr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, earlier tonight, we recognized STEM Premier And I just want to take this opportunity to thank our other business partners that, that work closely with our schools. And I'd like to thank our local chambers for helping us recruit our business partners that are engaged in our students. Um, I think I see a representative from the Metro Chamber. And, um, and the, I'd like to thank the Metro Chamber and the Berkeley Ch Chamber for helping us bring the businesses to our students. And we appreciate the collaboration that we have and the support from our chambers and the business partners that they bring to us. So thank you for that. Our, earlier tonight, uh, we mentioned that we do have a public hearing scheduled or a public meeting scheduled. And during that meeting, we will um, open up the floor for input from the residents and anyone that would like to attend that meeting. It's at next Tuesday, September the 30th at 6.30 at Goose Creek Primary School. Um, earlier today, we were able to review those proposals and um, um, the information that I'm getting that we're very optimistic that we have a proposal or proposals that will work for a school site. Now, I had made the statement a couple of weeks ago that my desire, and hopefully that we could get that school open by August of 2016, that's going to be a long shot, but I'm going to keep working as hard as I possibly can to meet that date, but it's going to take a collaboration from the community and all agencies to be able to pull that off. So I'm just going to ask that everybody go into that meeting with an open mind and willing to work together and do whatever it takes to um, reach an agreement that we can start, start working. And I, I just want to caution, uh, Mr. Healy, I heard you say early, shovel ready. Um, shovel ready. Um, can be used a lot of different ways, I guess. In my view, shovel ready is that we have a contract on the property and um, the due diligence has been done that we, and design's been done that we know that we can put a school on a site. So um, I am optimistic that, that we have multiple sites that will work, um, but we haven't done a lot of due diligence on some of the sites and so I don't want to be too overly optimistic. So thank you for um, your involvement in this process and we look forward to working with all the residents to get this project underway. I believe it would be the last project out of our bond referendum major projects that we haven't started making really significant progress. So, uh, And the last item, I just would like to congratulate our employees of Berkeley County School District. I was informed this week that our employees raised over $152,000 for the Trident United Way. Additionally, a student campaign raised over $9,000. So we totaled Berkeley County 
um, our students and faculty, staff, administrators, everyone invested or reinvested $161,000 um, back into our community. So I'd like to congratulate everyone for their in in efforts in supporting the Trying to Unite Away campaign. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Thompson. Now it's time to move to agenda item 12. Before I ask for a motion and a second to move into executive session, please allow me to state the purpose for executive session. Tonight we will hear personnel considerations, contractual matters, a legal briefing, and one expulsion appeal as amended earlier in the meeting. With that said, do I have a motion and a second to move into executive session? So, so moved. Mr. Cooper, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Etheridge. All those in favor of moving into executive session, please indicate by saying aye. 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 We stand in executive session.